how crazy would it be where it's like basically on one turn like you can see what your opponent's gonna do uh and you know and essentially like you know reverse your play based off what they're gonna do i think that would oh. that, that, that would be crazy like that would be so broken hey guys cyber relax i was just gonna get there anyway as this little buddy was saying 80 percent of you aren't subscribed to the channel so hit that subscribe button it really helps hey what pokemon are you what is up everybody welcome back to beast coast pokemon today we're here to do a bunch of speculation on pokemon scarlet and violet and man we've got a lot of things to talk about so gentlemen where do we get started uh dang they really do about to add a third type to all of the pokemon not all of them but i definitely think that they're going to have a gimmick where some mons are going to have a third typing and it's gonna throw uh everybody's brains into disarray because it's gonna really mess up the type chart just a little bit for the competitive people but i think they're gonna finally pull the trigger on it Meatball, do you think it's going to be the gimmick of the game, or do you think some Pokemon will naturally be found in the wild with a third type? I think it could be infused with the gimmick. It's kind of weird. Like, I'm guessing, because uh, we've seen in the trailers where, like, the character has a bracelet. Every, uh, every game since Gen 6 has had a bracelet. Maybe even Gen 5, if you include the Wonder Launcher thingy. But um, I, I think that that is going to have some impact in this, in that we're going to get something that's, like, mega adjacent that does add a third typing to certain Pokemon. I know, wild idea, but so, I think so it has What's legs. the basis for that? Like, is, is that just pure speculation or do you think there's like something that lends credit to that? Uh, so it's probably Cope. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Okay. I'm sure <laughs> that it's- uh, That's what you that, want. <laughs> I, I, like, I think there's gotta be something that's mega adjacent. Uh, I don't think that they're going to like admit to the fan base that they're like, yeah, we were, wrong for taking out megas here they are again and just add new ones uh and then give them third typings for some reason i think it's going to be like a a, a an adjacent gimmick that's kind of like that that gives them like a new type of form that adds on to a, a third type why don't one of you guys mention what if you think like that wouldn't happen because of the competitive vgc implications or if yeah, James hasn't talked yet, so so yeah, that would be that would be neat if you said like why you think that would be horrible or why you think it wouldn't be done. Okay, Meatball. I don't think it's gonna happen. I mean, a third. I could see a brand new type being introduced. I can't see a third type being added, mainly because I feel like it would complicate the game way too much with the type chart, and it would just be really hectic. I think for programming, plus the fact that I think it would just way overcomplicate things in general. So I don't think that they would add it, especially since most mechanics I feel like in the game are kind of simple to a degree. Like Megas, you have like maybe a new ability, some increased stats, and then Dynamax is just three turns with signature moves. The Crystals was just like a same type move, but uh, more increased space power. I don't think they would do a triple type. Yeah, uh, but it would be cool to see like a rock ground fire type get utterly obliterated by an, a, a, an eight times weak uh, water move. <laughs> Somewhere between Meatball and James's ideas on this, I was thinking that on the topic of a third type, maybe there could be a third type that you can switch to. Uh, so maybe you start with, like, let's say, a normal flying Pokemon that with the use of this new mechanic or something can become like a lightning flying Pokemon or a, a, it just changes one of the types over. Uh, but I do agree with James. It sounds hectic to have three types going on at one time. It would probably yeah. be very cool, but also sounds like a nightmare for competitive VGC players. <laughs> I think the best way that you could do that is if you adapted the like agile and strong style thing that they did with um with Legends Arceus and where you could use the triggers to kind of adjust between those. Uh, I don't know how that ends up being in practice, but I I could see that being the way that they get in the third type without having to give them all three types at once and mess up the type chart. If you were to do like triple typing, I, I could only see it being like one Pokemon, like the signature Pokemon that has the triple typing. I just can't see it being like widespread. That would be crazy to me. But it'd be right. interesting if you had even just one Pokemon, you know, the, the rock combination you just described. Like, 
uh, as, as uh, yeah, just one signature Pokemon I had three types. So, I don't know. There's definitely a lot of ways they could mix it up. I, I'd be surprised if that were, like, the new mechanic. Because, yeah, I think to James's point, you know, I don't think they want to overcomplicate the game. I, if anything, I think they want to simplify it more and more. Uh, and yeah. three types is just so crazy to keep track of. Like, I can't even do it in my head. Yeah. Also, you, uh, you brought up the idea of a new type potentially being able to be introduced. I feel like we're already too deep into the news cycle to where they would have already done that. Because, uh... Look at uh, the precedent of Fairy in Gen 6. That was, like, one of the first things they showed off with uh, with Sylveon. And e even if you go back, uh, all the way back to, like, Generation 2's news cycle, Dark and Steel were pretty early on, like, talked about as these are going to be, like, new types to counterbalance the insanity that was Psychic at the time. Uh, so, I, I, don't, I don't mean to shoot that down, but I figured... I'd, uh, I'd at least bring that up. So we talked about uh, third typing potentially being uh, connected to the bracelet or the mechanic, but speaking just strictly on the mechanic, um, some people have thought that maybe Megas are just straight up coming back. Uh, I really don't think that will be the new mechanic. Now, maybe you'll be able to Mega Evolve in the game, but I, if so, that would just be a completely separate thing where, oh, by the way, you can Mega Evolve, but that's not our brand new thing that, you know, what we have the bracelets for. Um, I think that the new mechanic will probably be something connecting the past and future vibe and kind of theme because we have the new professors who one represents the past and one represents the future and we could see like a mechanic that lets you transform your pokemon into its past or future form like maybe an old pokemon that got an asuian form and like a form that's new for this game or something like that i am part hoping and part expecting that we don't have another pokemon gets bigger mechanic like we've had with megas and dynamax i hope that we don't and i also think that we won't now that is probably the way you do the third typing like type change mid battle right there mm -hmm. so we've seen yeah. like fan made artwork of what are i think people have deemed them like proto and neo forms as like the past and future forms and by doing that you could also, again, with like the Legends Arceus thing where you use the triggers to adjust between the Agile and Strong style, you could do that to adjust between the Proto and Neo forms using the bracelet as like a self-contained time travel for the Pokemon exclusively that transforms them between their different eras or whatever. And that's how you do it. That might be, that's probably the biggest reach we've done so far, but that could that, that would that be the cool. coolest thing that they could do. Uh, like, imagine, because we've already seen Hisui and Zoroark. Like, if we have regular Zoroark, we could go between the Hisui variant with the past version. So you, you go from dark to normal ghost. But then we see another form of it that's, like, futuristic that adds on, like, maybe Steel type or some Psychic type or something that makes it look more... Um, I mean, I don't know how to describe futuristic for... Op fox like a fox that is an illusion to people but i think people understand the concept of what i'm talking about yeah it'll look like the episode of spongebob where everything turns into titanium yeah there we go. <laughs> everybody just gains the steel type that's steel the third type no more like no uh, species we're... yeah exactly delta species shout outs to hall on pokemon <laughs> I was going to say, like, I feel like a lot of the mechanics recently are focused more on, like, offense rather than defense. And, like, Dynamax, you know, can be done in either way, but it changed the way how people play the game, right? Because it's, like, dynamic speed was a thing. So you could Dynamax something, give something a speed boost, and, like, in VGC specifically, it uh, it, it turns battles, it, like, it can, they can be so much more fast-paced. Like, it, it's so easy to lose a game in one turn, uh, in this generation especially, it feels like. It also enabled things like Porygon Z to be really strong when they otherwise, you know, they didn't really see usage. So, I don't know. I was mixed about Dynamax. I liked some of it. I liked the idea that it applied to every Pokemon, right? Whereas, like, Megas, you know, when we had Megas, there were only a couple of Megas. And even within that pool, some were just so much better than others. So, when it came to competitive play, you know, you'd see a kind of list of four or five that were really popular. But then the rest really just were kind of non-existent. So, what I liked about Dynamax was that it could apply to everyone. But... I, I would want something to be a little bit less intense. I think Dynamax, you know, like the the way it just skewed the game was, uh, it was a lot. And I, you know, 
competitive players will play at the end of the day, like whatever they're given because their goal is to just win, right? Uh, but I, I think it, it certainly turned a fair amount of people away uh, away from, from playing. And so I like the idea of applying something like every Pokemon can use, but I'm interested in it being a little bit more like slow paced rather than fast paced offense. Yeah, I I can definitely agree with that because uh, like like you said, it turned it turned a lot of people away. It turned me away. The only format I enjoyed playing was Series <laughs> Ten because it had it banned and I never touched it again. So uh, I could yeah, please. See, so you brought up the time with the time aspect with the past and future thing, and let me just say, time in any game is very complicated, any media realistically, like we saw Mystery Dungeon, actually they did it pretty well in Mystery Dungeon, I was actually very impressed with how well they did it, uh, but of course, uh, we're not going to have two separate mechanics, where Scarlet's going to have one in with the past, and then Violet's going to have one in the future, right, that's just never going to happen, so there has to be like some kind of one mechanic, I think, and my prediction, I said this on Twitter, but my Gen 9 mechanic prediction was the trainer will be able to restore one weakened Pokemon to full health, remove any status conditions, stat changes, recover their item if lost, and restore power points at any point throughout the battle one time use. Because it kind of fits that like time aspect where you basically get to bring back a fully healed Pokemon before like it was placed in battle. And I thought it'd be like a pretty cool thing. It's very similar to what we talked about earlier with the Gen 5 Wonder Launcher, where you could use a full restore basically uh, depending on like points and stuff, but uh, instead, you would be able to use it at any time, and it would work for all Pokemon, like we mentioned before. I think they're going to make mechanics more for, like, all Pokemon can use them instead of just, like, single them out like Mega Evolutions did. So, I'd say this is probably one of the more realistic ones. It would be definitely a big game changer for sure, and it would work for both, like, set of Pokemon, but also, like, defensive plays. I think it would cover both of them, but, uh, yeah, this was my theory in general. I just, uh, thinking of that, like hearing you say that made me think of something i don't think this will be it but how crazy would it be where it's like basically on one turn like you can see what your opponent's gonna do uh and, you know and essentially like you know reverse your play based off what they're gonna do i think that would oh. that, 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 that would be crazy like that would be so broken so i don't want like that. a but, like a future but, vision like that yeah, would be yeah, kind of yeah, sick. Yeah, exactly. uh because then you could act yeah you just see what did your opponent click on? Oh, okay. Uh, oh. Click the exact <laughs> counter to that move. Like, wait, that, but that imagine if you both, broken. You okay, both wait, activated hold on. on the same turn. <laughs> well, one question, Aaron. Uh -huh. Would you get extra time? Because we have time limits for moves. And what if the opponent waited till the last second to click? So you could potentially waste be, it. That so. would become the <laughs> new meta. <laughs> so yeah, would, no, that's so at that point, you would just timer stall at that point. Would you, would you would add suck. time to that if that would work? I would, in my head, I was like, maybe you add like an extra period of time, like b between inputting the moves and then like having the decision as to whether or not you'd want to use the mechanic. But I don't know. I've, I haven't given it any thought. It was literally just something <laughs> as we we're talking about time. But I was like, okay, that's kind of crazy. I, I, there's, I, there's no way I think that would be it, but that would be wild. <laughs> I don't think they would know how to, I don't think they would be able to program it. I actually don't think they would be able to, but that would actually be pretty interesting and pretty hellish at the same time. So yeah. Yeah. Even with your idea, James, I feel like it'd be pretty hellish on the time restraints just because a one-time heal would just make the match longer because you're essentially, me for VGC, you would be messing with five Pokemon instead of four, essentially. And I feel like people would be uh, rather miffed to have to play a longer game because the games are already complex enough. So you, if you fall behind like one turn due to a... Uh, uh, missed prediction or whatnot. It just makes taking uh, losing the game take longer. And uh, also for events, like imagine having to do that. Are you going to make the round? Uh, are you going to extend round times by like five minutes or ten minutes I, just to I mean, make up for a mechanic like that? I mean, VGC already has overall match timer. Each match currently, I think it's twenty minutes if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's it's yeah. twenty fifteen. I think it's twenty, I think it's 20 now. Yeah. yeah. So it wouldn't really affect the timer realistically. There a lot of rounds go to time in VGC anyway. Uh, less more, I guess, with the restricted format, but like they still go to time realistically. And I don't think it would change super much, but I think it'd be really cool because it could reward offensive things. Like imagine having like a focus ash restored basically, or like, I don't know, playing defensive with Incineroar and then getting it back to full health. It would be pretty interesting. I think it just like has so much application to like both kinds of play styles that 
I think it would be unique in its own way. Of course, I don't think it's a healthy one, but I do think it'd be a pretty interesting one on its own right. Yeah. What, what do you think is a healthy one then? I haven't, like, I've tried to think about it. And I'm like, I don't know. I gotta have a dumb game design. So it's, a, it's, every time a, I it's criticize mega evolution mechanic, without like... mega Kangaskhan. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> I don't know if there's like a mechanic. It just depends because with a time aspect, there's like so much you could probably speculate. I don't even know if we could consider like a lot of the mechanics healthy. I Mega was kind of like the closest. I think Gen eight, uh, Gen Seven Megas were probably the closest to healthy. No. Chow Tag was still like broken on Mega Gengar and stuff, but I don't know. It's just a really hard thing. I think balance is just really hard because like Z moves, like it can be hecka strong at one point, and then we had Dynamax with three of them. I don't know if you could really like make up super balanced mechanic. I think it's just gonna swing one way or the other, and most of the times so, I don't. Yeah, the thing I think. That... I think all the mechanics in Pokemon just like game defined and broke it realistically. Like gems, even in Gen 5, like those were absolutely insane. And then every mechanic from there, like there was obviously something defining about it. I think we didn't need Megas on every team or you didn't need a Z Crystal on every team, but yeah. Yeah, if they had given you some sort of benefit to, for having not like equipped this one of those items and instead kept your team rather vanilla, mm. that would have balanced it. Uh, Like maybe a overall 10 percent or 20 percent stat 15 maybe stat percent but stat boost to everything on the team i think that could get a little bit broken or if you select a mon that gets that rather than like the mega evolution or something that would have fixed it but uh that's that's i can't trying yeah, to balance it a former game i mean what are you gonna it's do really with cool that? In theory I, I think i just think about how like for them at the end of the day i think like you want to advertise your core gameplay and the key mechanic is critical to the core gameplay and so when people yeah. aren't using the key mechanic then it's it, it kind of like counters but i, I uh, you know it, i think it's really cool from like a competitive standpoint like theorizing about stuff like that but unfortunately i don't think they'll ever go in that direction and uh it's it's like what i was saying where i would imagine i, I personally think yeah it makes more sense to have a mechanic that applies to more pokemon than fewer but mm -hmm. that's why i was you know going back to when we were talking about the regional form stuff it's like would you create a form for everyone probably not but I like I'm curious how how they would go up uh, about like yeah type changes during a battle. I think that would be pretty crazy. I'm actually kind of thinking about it because if would they make a form for every Pokemon? If they There's made no it like, way, right? not, like it's not so hard to even make like ten or fifteen. <laughs> it, if you made like a different coloration that barely had any changes, like, like uh, shiny completely out of the ballpark. Yeah, like. Think of Sonic CD and the way that they handle past and future levels. They're kind of just palette swaps that keeps one, like, rustic and one, like, machine futuristic color-ish. Uh, I think if they if they did that, that would work, but that would be, uh, that would take a lot of time, uh, I'm sure. But I, I could see it being workable if they gave themselves confines and only made specific, like, uh, extravagant forms for certain like past and futures of Pokemon and such. I guess on the um future site point that we were talking about earlier, like what if? And I also don't think this will be a thing, but it'd be cool. I'm um, just thinking about it. What if like the mechanic is at one point in the battle you can like refresh a turn basically. So you like click a button and it basically refreshes the game state to the previous turn. Oh, and then that you would have to play so in. Don't you have to play like a 50-50 at that point? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, do they do the your same opponent thing again, change or... their play? <laughs> Or, uh, or maybe if you force them into the same play and you're allowed to change it, that would be the only way. But then it's like, that just, that just throws That's, things off. That would be too, so strong. Way too if your, powerful. Opponent, yeah, I, your opponent has to keep their same turn and you get to change yours. But, <laughs> but at, at the, the day, same time, think, like, where do you position that? Like, if you activate that at a certain point, when do you do that? Do you wait right. as late into the game as possible to go ahead and do a an upset or i mean that at like the first critical moment in a battle to just widen the lead and immediately take the match here's the thing i think that mechanic no matter what i always think the second player wins because you do the mechanic on the turn the opponent uses the mechanic and then they're locked into that play then you refresh and then you just make your new play and then yeah I don't know. once again like i i don't expect it to be that like i i think the mechanic Firstly, it will be something that fundamentally alters a Pokemon, uh, similar to Dynamax or Mega. Like, that's my guess. So that yeah. that's where the forms thing is interesting, because that would, like, apply to my theory. But we have no idea. So oh, we haven't looked at the uh, the casual uh, side of everything. Uh, Luke, I think you're probably the one that would have the most of the casual perspective. Uh, I'm sure most of this has sounded 
absolutely ridiculously insane and would not want that uh these sorts of mechanics in the game i'm sure well from i think the casual players actually want the most ridiculous things like aaron mentioned that if they they're selling a game and they're selling the new mechanic they want you to see people using the new mechanic and that's how games get new players they make things look as cool and as over the top as possible like you know that's why in the card game they make like v max and gx and v star pokemon that's why in the video game they made gigantamax and megas so i think from a casual standpoint they want to make the new mechanic as crazy and cool as possible while not breaking the game well, I think that about wraps it up for us. There is a lot for us to still find out, though, about the new Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet video games. Let us know what you're most excited about and some of your own theories. I mean, we had a lot of fun, you know, coming up with our theories about how they're going to connect the past, future, and what it all really means for the new video games and competitive play. So we'll be very happy to read your comments about it down below. Thanks for watching today here on Beast Coast Pokemon, and we'll see you next time.